of 1917. Now, I'm not normally very into war movies. I mean, they're all right, but they don't really excite me too much. I can appreciate movies like The Thin Red Line or Saving Private Ryan, but they're not going to be high up on my list of favorites. But every once in a while, a war movie comes along that does something a little different and it really resonates with me. And by every once in a while, I mean that this has happened once, with Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. But now, with 1917, it has happened once again. Kind of. Let me, let me be clear up front. I really enjoyed 1917. Even more than I expected. But there is one thing. One little but significant thing. Well, yeah, well let's get to that later. For now, let's talk about the good. First and foremost, there's the main gimmick of the movie. The one that everyone is talking about. The fact that it was shot to look like it was one long extended take. This was one of two things I knew about the movie. The other being that it was a war film. I didn't even know which war it was. Knowing it was shot this way was a little bit distracting because I spent so much time looking for where they might have cut from one shot to another in order to make it appear seamless, but I actually quite enjoyed doing so. And let me tell you, they did such a good job that it can be difficult to tell at times. Having seen some behind the scenes footage, there were shots that were cut that I would have sworn was still a continual scene. It's still that good. Filming the movie like this really makes it feel like you're a part of it. The single camera, continual shot method gives you a sense of the trenches, the chaos of the battlefield, and adds a sense of presence that a lot of movies don't manage. There aren't a lot of movies that pull off immersion well, but this is absolutely one of them. In fact, there is so much woven together in the way the movie is filmed that deserves attention. The cinematography is frequently stunning, from the strong opening shot to the eerie scene with the flares, which I will come back to later, to the final scene. There are so many beautiful, well-crafted shots, it's worth seeing just to look at, even if you don't care about the story at all. Perhaps the most significant thing for me, though, was the silent storytelling. There is a great deal about the movie and the story that is told in the, in the world around the characters, with little to no dialogue present or necessary. From the characters walking through a busy medic tent to wading through muddy water and craters to bodies half buried in the mud, you get so much of the war developed by visuals alone, and it's more effective than most war movies by a long shot. In fact, I am fairly certain that you could watch the entire movie with the sound off, no subtitles, and you would still get the majority of the story no problem. That to me is very impressive. And the depictions of the dead are ghastly. This is some of the best props work I have ever seen in regards to showing dead bodies. They have weight and presence that often is lacking, and they look like, I imagine, a dead body abandoned on the battlefield might. The story is pretty good, it doesn't get bogged down in being more than it needs to be. This is a film that is focused on depicting the stress, chaos, and unpredictability of war, and it does so with precision. Unfortunately, there are a few very convenient story points that took away from it being totally, totally believable for me. However, those are minor. The rest of the time, I felt the story was handled quite well. I understand why these conveniences were included, so I don't entirely fault them for doing it this way, but it did take me out of the otherwise immersive film. The acting was solid, and though the characters act a little over the top on a, in a few brief scenes, they were supposed to be young, and I firmly believe that the over the top bits were deliberate and realistic. There are even a few unexpected appearances by big name actors, given small but significant roles and they don't, they don't steal the show at all. I felt that was really well done. I didn't know about any of this, and initially thought that all of the actors would be lesser known, but was pleasantly surprised a couple of times. If you haven't seen the movie yet and don't know who they are, do yourself a favor and don't look it up. It's a pleasant surprise when they appear unexpectedly. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a few scenes that are stunning to behold, and one of them involves flares. I won't give any more details of that, so as I don't want to spoil the movie. 
And I'm sorry if this establishes some undue expectation and anticipation, but it is breathtakingly beautiful. I could watch that sequence on repeat, and I don't do that with almost anything. Overall, the movie definitely worth watching. The craft alone is worth the price of admission. On my review scale, that is exactly three, point, three points long, from bad to, you know, okay, to good. 1917 lands firmly in the good category. But what about that one thing that I mentioned? That, that, that one thing that sticks with me? Or, well, as I mentioned before, I'm not particularly a fan of war movies, with the exception of Dunkirk. Dunkirk just lingered with me. I thought about it for days. It affected the way I thought about my writing and the type of thing I wanted to watch and read. 1917 just didn't. I thought it would, but other than making me want to rewatch Dunkirk, it quickly slipped from my consciousness. And aside from the few convenient plot points, that's the only knock I have against the film. Which really isn't a knock. It just didn't affect me emotionally as much as I was expecting. And don't get me wrong, I cried during the film. It was powerful. It just didn't stay with me the way Dunkirk did, or Schindler's List, Shawshank Redemption, Synecdoche, New York, and others managed to linger. And maybe I shouldn't even mention that. That's not a criteria that is necessary by any means whatsoever. I only bring it up because I can't stop putting the movie up there with Dunkirk, and Dunkirk did affect me that way. So, I guess if anything, I'm inadvertently creating a Joel hierarchy of war films. So since I already did that, I guess I should just go with it. Dunkirk is my favorite war movie, and 1917 is a very close second. And that's saying something. For a guy who doesn't really care for war movies, to say that I have favorites is high praise to those films. So there you have it. 1917 is a good movie that is absolutely worth seeing. If you haven't, I would recommend checking it out on the big screen while you have the chance. If you have seen the film, let me know what you thought down in the comments, especially in regards to the storytelling and filmmaking. I'm curious to hear what you think. Until next time, this is Uncle Joel saying, stay tangible. Thank you.